All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us on the next Facebook Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. And I have a really nice honor today. Uh, I am introducing one of our newest Team Clean Machine athletes. Uh, so welcome, his name is Brendan Walsh. And uh, I want to welcome him to the team, but he's got a, an amazing story that I think is very empowering. And I hope a lot of you uh, learn from his experience too, because it strikes a big chord with me. Having gone through many struggles myself, uh, dealing with depression as a younger age, um, becoming a plant-based person, and then and as an athlete too, Brenda and I share a lot of the similar paths and um, our passion for helping others, for giving back to charities, which you'll talk about too as well. A lot of synchronicity here. So I'm, I'm really excited to bring someone who now I consider a good friend as well as a teammate, Brendan, known as Bicycle Brendan, because he does some amazing bicycle work, including owning a Guinness World Book of Records. Welcome, Brendan. Thanks for having me, Jeff. I'm uh, stoked to be a part of the team. You know, it's great to be cut from uh, such a, a, a fine cloth here um, with all, uh, you know, you practice what you preach. <laughs> so let's let's just jump right into this. Uh, you've got an amazing story. Um, so talk, tell me how it all kind of started out for you. Um, I know you come from a little bit of a similar background um, in, um, and dealing with uh, some issues and then moving into a plant base. So just talk about how that unfolded for you. Yeah. So I guess I would have to take the story back to 2014. Um, I was kind of living through a bunch of really bad habits, um, you know, a day, uh, day after day of um, partying a little too hard, I guess you could say, um, tons of nefarious activities all kind of culminated to um, the act of a terrible motorcycle crash that I got into. Um, mm. I got sent flying over the handlebars, going over 20 miles per hour. I wow. was sent skidding on um, black tar, scraped up the whole side of my face. Uh, I tore my rotator cuff. And actually, you know, there's two ways you can get appendicitis. Uh, one is from an infection from within and the other is from impact. And mm. I hit the ground so hard I got appendicitis. Wow. Um, you know, and I'm a big believer in it's not the things that happen to us, but our reactions to them. Holy. You know, so after that, um, I was held up for several months. You know, I was I was still in college. I actually ended up failing a couple classes because of this. The mm -hmm. teachers and I mean, like at that point, the teachers didn't believe me, you know, especially one of them didn't believe me uh, and within wow. kind of good reason, you know. Uh, so a after that. I was stuck in a chair for like a month. Uh, I watched, I ended up, you know, watching the world cup, the entire world cup. That was cool. But other than that, you know, I found my old mountain bike in my parents' mm -hmm. house. And then it was a, a slow progression of like, Oh, like I should ride my bike here. I haven't been there in years, you know, cause I moved away. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, five miles turned 10 miles turned 40 miles. And then I got my first road bike, and my first real adventure was riding from Boston, where I was living at the time, all the way to where I grew up in central Massachusetts uh, to surprise my mother for her birthday. Wow. Um, and then ever since then, you know, that was, I didn't have a smartphone. I wrote, I wrote all the directions down on a piece of paper with a pen uh, that I carried in a plastic bag, <laughs> plastic bag with me. Wow. Um, yes. And that ever since then, it was uh, like, how far can I ride? How can I get here? You know, um, I sold my car. And ever since then, I've I've been riding my bike everywhere I go. What an amazing story. What a comeback. I mean, for a lot of people, it was a motorcycle, but, you know, getting back on the road and overcoming that fear of getting hit, that must have been uh, tough psychologically for you to overcome as well. Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, you know, uh, the physical ailments last a certain amount of time um, and they're very, you know, there's most of them are surface level. You know, mm -hmm. you, you feel these things, you see these things, but you also watch them heal. But what you don't ever really do is kind of like turn the mirror on yourself mm -hmm. and kind of look in and see what, what's going in, um, you know, with your, your mental health. And I didn't realize how much I was struggling with that um, mm -hmm. until I started putting in 
all of the hours of work into myself, you know, all the long nights of riding my bike through the night. Um, you have a lot of time of self-reflection. And that's great. And that it's, it's kind of like an act. I feel like it's an active meditation. Yeah. You know? It puts you in that zone with your conversation with yourself and you begin to reflect and look at all the things you do. And, and when, at what point did you actually start reflecting on your diet and your health in, in that aspect? And then how did that affect your, your performance? Yeah. So in the spring to summer of 2017, I went on my first bike adventure. Um, I never did an overnight before. Uh, mm -hmm. I just loaded up my bike with way too much stuff <laughs> and started riding west. Uh, you know, I slowly mailed stuff home along the way. But the culmination of, of the diet point was I was staying with this family out in eastern Washington on this farm. It was, you know, they were living, um, they were living up in the mountains, Eastern Washington. It's a, it's like a high desert out there nice. and they're a very well-known farm family to the point of a neighbor comes by and he brought, um, a baby deer to them. Cause I don't know, I don't know if you know when a mother will, will leave their deer, uh, their baby, um, you know, underneath a bush, underneath a tree, somewhere safe while they can go and get food. But what yeah. often happens is they'll get hit by a car, you know, a hunter will shoot them, you know, a myriad of things that can happen. And basically this deer was completely emaciated. So it was been there for several days. They brought this deer into this family where I was staying. I was literally just about to leave. Like I said, goodbye. Mm -hmm. And uh, something said, you should stick around. And wow. I went back inside and we ended up I was bottle feeding this deer. I was feeding a deer with a baby bottle wrapped up in a warming blanket on the open door of an oven. And, you know, you see, when you see a deer, it's such a fleeting moment. You know, they're often terrified of us, you know, in any capacity. You see it, you lock eyes and it's gone. But, you know, I sat with this wild animal, you know, stroking its head, comforting it and feeding it, nursing it back to health. Um, and I just, I just had this connection. I saw, I, I saw in its eyes and it like lashed onto me, you know, I, I, I've known, I knew this deer for like 10 minutes at this point and it just lashed onto me. And ever since that moment, um, you know, it's, it, it's like when you, um, you look, I've always heard the expression, the eyes are the window to the soul, yeah. you know, and it, and it truly was that moment. I had this soul connection with this deer. Um, you know, I got home. And it just was this lingering thought in my head, you know, like, what am I doing? It was a constant, you know, Rolodex of thoughts. It was like, this leads to this, this leads to this, you know, it's not, it's all connected. So a after that, um, only like a couple months later after I got home, it was like this, I went from a weaning process, just a, I went full vegan. Um, and then from there on out, it was like, wow, I can really go like all day now. You know, I started the next year, the next year, legitimately, like six months later, I did my first marathon. Um, I taught myself how to distance swim. I did my first half Ironman and I did my first double century ride. Wow. And that's a, that wasn't even in a full year of being vegan, Jeff. You know, wow. it was like instant. And, that, and that's the incredible healing of plants. And, and obviously, the, when we can clean up our diet, when we can supercharge our cells with these plant nutrients, phytonutrients, antioxidants, polyphenols, all these amazing phytochemicals that are in plants, even the fiber feeding our microbiome so that we actually can uptake and increase nutrition altogether. It's amazing how that affects. I know I was a swimmer in high school and college. And I saw, oh my God, I was consuming about 5,000 calories a day yeah. to, to keep up with that level of, of burning energy. And I was, you know, six, 7% body fat eating 5,000 calories a day. I believe it. Yeah. <laughs> because of the training, but it, it made me really realize what a significant connection there is between what we're eating and how our body actually responds to that food and what we put in it. And it just makes sense, but sometimes it takes, you know, experiences like that to make you see it in a totally different way. Yeah. And when you do, it's, 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 I'm sure you felt the same thing. It's hard to unsee. It's hard to unlearn. And um, yeah, so, you know, 
you've you've done amazing things. So after this motorcycle accident, like we alluded to later, you set off on an epic journey, one that would put you in the record books. Yeah. Tell us about that experience. What got you started on that? And what was the experience like? So after, um, you know, after, after I rode cross country, I did that to raise money for uh, St. Jude's Children's Hospital, um, a, you know, an amazing organization it does so much for all kinds of people. Um, you know, I was, I was out there pushing myself day after day, training, training for all these events and, you know, it's really good self work. And I kept thinking about like, you know, I put all this time in, like, mm -hmm. how can I use this? to, you know, to give back to something that, you know, I gained so much um, from all those times of self-reflection and, and just seeing the amazing things people can do. You know, I wanted to give back to that community and I wanted to be able to specifically focus on an organization that was working towards a similar goal as I was. So sometime late in the same year, um, I came up with the idea to ride down the coast um, and I would say maybe, maybe fall 2018, like kind of, you know, an inkling, you know how it happens. Like you get like one, one little thing comes up and it, it plants this seed and it grows. Yeah. And, you know, I would started training hard for that. I started lifting a bunch of heavy weights, uh, in the off season, putting a lot of time in the pool because I was nursing an injury. Um, and in May, of 2019, I was about a month out from the original leave date of the record. Uh, it was May 7th. I was on a typical training ride, uh, ride to Walden Pond every morning. Uh, I got hit by a car. I was bombing down a hill. I was going about 25 miles per hour and the guy was doing the exact same thing. We collided. I smashed, uh, I don't even know what I smashed through to be honest. I just remember hitting his car, hitting the sound, hearing the sound of shattered glass I did a couple flips in the air and then bounced on the pavement. Uh, my bike was totaled. I had, I tore my meniscus uh, and all the, you know, PTSD related to that. Um, mm -hmm. That's the, what, what pulled me out of that um, mental rut more than anything was the act of meditation. You know, mm -hmm. like you were saying before, riding the bike is an active meditation, but yes you know, just like anything else, you, you need to lift weights as well as go out and run. They supplement each other, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I started meditating and it wasn't until I started meditating that my healing process began. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I went to physical therapy for a couple months, you know, and it, it's hard, you know how it is being a, um, you know, you feel like you're at the top of your game and then just mm -hmm. boom, nothing. Mm -hmm. You go to I zero, thought. you know, you, you go to less than zero, you know, if you, to be honest, cause like, I was so afraid I couldn't leave my house. I literally walked around my house with all the lights off with my hood up for like a couple weeks, you know, wow. like I was terrified to go outside, which is so unlike me too. I couldn't, you know, I couldn't ride my bike. Um, you know, it, it was hard to walk. Um, and then over the course of only like really like two and a half to three months, I built all of that strength, all that endurance back up. And then on September 30th, which is my mother's birthday, that's why I picked it, I left mm -hmm. from the top of Maine, this little town called Madawaska. It's on the border of Canada mm -hmm. and rode all the way to Key West, Florida at the uh, southernmost point buoy, the one that says like 90 miles to Cuba and everybody lines up to take pictures at. I rode to that in 11 days and nine and a half hours. Um, wow. Yeah, all to raise money for the National Alliance on Mental Illness. So yeah, what a great group, um, a support group that really connects people for family members, friends, people that have um, people, loved ones um, that are, are dealing with, uh, you know, mental illness or mental health challenges, um, even depression like myself, you know, um, what a great thing to do um, to give back. And what a, an amazing turnaround. Now that got you into the Guinness World Book of Records, correct? Yeah, it did. Um, a year to the date, actually, uh, they got back to me. A year to the date of the accident. So May 7th of this year, um, I, the record became official. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah, that yeah. Thank you. Feat. So for, for all of you, that's a, the fastest crossing of the United States 
on bicycle from the north to the south, southernmost point, which is in Key West, Florida. Yep. Incredible. So talk about that ride. I mean, that's 11 days on a bicycle. Yeah. <laughs> but it goes through your mind, and you probably met some pretty interesting people along the path, too, as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, a standout for me was this gentleman I met in South Carolina. You know, at that point, it had been, I mean, I want to say like six or so days um, and this is six or so days of riding 200 plus miles a day, you know, <laughs> waking up and riding through whatever conditions, you know, I, I live uh, just outside of Boston and it was September and the myriad of temperatures I was, I was going to try to acclimate to were insane. When I started off day one, it was 31 degrees. When I wow. finished in Key West, it was 105 degrees. Like, <laughs> oh you like literally can't prepare your body for that. So, you know, at that point, I was in South Carolina. Um, and, you know, up here in New England, when it rains, it's like some little drops. You know, it's maybe hard for a minute and then it's done. I rode through the fattest, most torrential rain I've ever seen in my life for 17 hours that day. <laughs> and I was just riding scared, you know. I was on, you know, because down there, they're not used to cyclists. So I'm down there. I'm just hammering it on the side of these washed out highways. Cars are ripping past me. You know, I'm like dodging trees that fell down because of this storm, you know, just trying not to submerge myself in water. And I am just beat at the end of the day. I'm fried. You know, my muscles hurt. My mind is tapped. I had like early onset trench foot at this point because my feet were wet all day. And I get to the motel now staying that night and I meet this gentleman and he's like, you know, he gives me the question that everybody did. It was like, what are you wow. doing, dude? Yeah. What are you doing? Like who, you know, it was like dude in all lime green clothing showing up at nearly one in the morning on a bike. Like, what are you doing, man? So I, I you know, uh, this is the whole point, you know, it was like to give people the message. So I, you know, I told him about NAMI. I told him about, you know, my friends that I've lost, how I have struggled with, you know, mental illness. And he's like, wow, that's, that's so heavy. You know, I just got out of the hospital. I was diagnosed bipolar. Uh, I tried to kill myself, you know? So mm -hmm. we, we had this back and forth. He ended up, you know, he turned his he completely turned himself around in the middle of his conversation. He's all excited. He's like, I'm going to start working out tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. You know, he's so excited. Just, just about the concept of life again, you know, yeah. just think about the essence of that, just about to be alive again. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, right before that, like, I was like, man, you know, I'm like trying to reason with myself. I was like, I hope someone steals my bike. Then I won't have to finish this. You know, yeah, right. and, then I, and then I meet this guy and he completely turns me around. It was like mm. my legs were just fresh. You know, um, I was having a bunch of stomach issues from all of the like gas station food I was eating. And it was like, that's a small problem. now. You know, when you when you remember what you're doing it all for right. and, and meeting him, that was, you know, it, it's hard to say that wasn't supposed to happen, you know, right. because we were both at these low, like some of the lowest points. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we just, we're there for each other Two two complete strangers in the middle of the night in South Carolina, you know, you couldn't make it up. And, and, uh, to relate, I, I remember pushing myself, uh, when you're dieting for, to get in stage competition shape, it's, it's tough because you're training yeah. harder than you ever have. You're depleting yourself of serotonin because you're, uh, robbing yourself of carbohydrates that would normally produce that. So, you know, you're going through mood shifts, you're going through hunger pains, you're going through stress and, and, and all of that. And your body's just screaming to change, you know, and it, it is difficult. But, you know, when I get in the gym and I'm like, just why am I doing this and wanting to quit? And then I think about the animals and I think, wow, there's a trillion animals going to die this year. Mm -hmm. And if I'm complaining about <laughs> my little my little position on this planet yeah and and it just changes the perspective and it just makes me want to push harder makes me want to represent makes me want to be that inspiration for other people because if I, you know what i do or what we do can change people like not only like he uh, you change, helped change him, but he helped change you in that conversation too i mean it goes both ways when i feel connected to someone when I get these wonderful emails from our customers 
of them telling about how their health has improved, how their skin's cleared up, how their you know aches and pains are going away using products. And it's like, wow, that just feels so good. And it reminds me, you know, I'm dealing with like product issues and manufacturing issues and shipping problems. And, and it's like, all of that just disappears. And I'm like, I read that email and I'm like, ah, right. That's why I do this, you know, <laughs> because it's, a, it's affecting people's lives. These plants uh, that were, that we're offering people are really amazing plants at, at healing. You've gone through some incredible healing, both on an emotional, mental side, but physical sides, two accidents, a motorcycle accident, getting hit by a car on your bike, and amazing healing turnarounds, and and then pushing through such a, an amazing experience like that. That's, that's, that's soul deep stuff. That's stuff that carries you through life, you know? And we're just really excited. So... This is an incredible story and I'm sure, and I'm hoping you get to share this story with a lot more people, not only through us, but through a book you're writing. So yeah. talk about the book. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the book is you know, a culmination of the story of coming to the ride, uh, the ride itself, and kind of all of the philosophical lessons I learned along the way. You know, Like you're saying, I had so many people after I got hit. That was the second car I got hit by that year, by the way. In February, I got hit by a different car and I got a concussion so bad. I was out of work for two weeks. So I got hit by another car a couple months later and everybody was like, oh man, I, I totally get it. You know, you know, hang up your hat. You, you tried your best. And I'm like, no, this is fuel for the fire. <laughs> you know, you know, this is that pure organic plant-based food for the fire. You know, like this is burning hotter than ever. Uh, so the book, the book tells uh, that story. Um, and you know, it culminates in in the end, um, getting to that buoy all the way in Key West. Yeah. Buoy, booyah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Book of records. Well, this this is this is amazing. I'm sure I'll have you back on. We'll talk about lots more stuff too. Um, let's see, uh, um, what I I know you can't give the total details, but you want to give us a little hint on what your next adventure is. And <laughs> yeah, so a, as most people know me as Bicycle Brendan, um, you know I do I do a little bit of everything. I I love it all. You know I uh, I swim uh, indoor outdoor. I've, I've you know always lifted weights, but this time it's going to be a long distance run challenge. Um, it's going to be something that. Um, little thinking outside the box, you know, uh, one of my goal is with this, um, first of its kind run is to raise the remaining money for NAMI. So with the bike ride, we raised just under $6,500. So the goal is to raise the remaining $3,500 for NAMI with the run. Right. Um, so, you know, that, that's the purpose of it. It's, I, I read a lot about the, the science, of philosophy of, of of athletics and one thing is talking about intrinsic and extrinsic motivation you know mm -hmm. and it's like it's more than just one thing to do a big race you know you have to have some sort of reason behind it once it gets so tough you know mm -hmm. so that that's the reason behind it all there's there's nothing like the experience of living a person purposeful life yeah. for sure Having that motivation that drives you uh, is the reward to me. It is the process to me. It is the reason for me, you know. Yeah. And I love that that love, that compassion, that passion can drive you to achieve things that inspires other people so they can continue to pay that forward. That's that ripple effect. You know, when you do something and it drops in the water and it affects other people, and then they are inspired who do something and affects other people. And that chain of events, that's the beauty of when human beings focus on something that they really love, that they really care about, and they can pay it forward, that those effects can triple out and just continue to multiply. Yeah. Um, so uh, thank you, uh, Christine um, and Jackie, for joining us here. Uh, thank you for your comments. Uh, thumbs up for that. Uh, one set, Jackie said, love you. So definitely feeling the love here. Absolutely. And, uh, and um, so, yeah, your next adventure, so people can follow you. 
where can they follow you on Facebook, on Instagram? What are your, yeah, what's I haven't kind of linked up to each other, you know, Facebook and Instagram. I post kind of like my daily, you know, my daily grind on Instagram as best as I can, you know, cause you know, with a bit, like we we're saying, we we're saying just before we started, you know, you look at a puzzle, it's a thousand pieces. So many people think you're just going to do one thing and it's boom. That's the whole story. It's like, right. there are so many different steps that it takes to get to where you want to be. Uh, so, you know, follow me. I'm, I'm at Bicycle Brendan on both Instagram and Facebook. Also, my website is bicyclebrendan.com. Um, Excellent. You know, the, alliterate, the alliteration works pretty well there. Great. And um, any, any parting thoughts you want to you wanna leave? I, uh, just um, where you're at. And, and before you say that, I really want to thank you. It's nice getting to know you both as a friend but also to to follow you, to see what you do, to cheer you on, and to be a part of your experience and and uh, inspiring others. But parting words, any thoughts you'd like to share with people? Uh, I'm just excited to be a part of the Clean Machine team with you and all the great other people on it, Jeff. Uh, you're you're an inspiration, and I love your enthusiasm when you talk. You know, when I first heard you talk about the products. It was more than, you know, like this, you know, it was more than just a business responsibility. I could see it in your eyes. This is something you truly believe in. Just like myself, you know, what I do is I, I truly believe if you try your best to be a better person every day in whatever way that is, you know, spiritually, physically, you know, and you always look at things in the most positive light and try to achieve that, you know, you're, you're always going to be doing the right thing. So. Yeah. You know, I'm just, you know, I'm very excited uh, to work with you, Jeff. Likewise. And, uh, like yeah, keep this sure. ball rolling, you know. <laughs> Indeed. So, um, yeah, definitely we will be doing a uh, uh, supporting Brendan and his uh, bikes and runs. Um, we will also uh, be doing a fundraise for NAMI because it's something that I really believe in, too. And for the uh, those of you who don't know, uh, uh, NAMI is the National Alliance on Mental Illness. National Alliance on yes. Mental Illness. So great support group. Uh, Absolutely. Um, so it's a really to connect people who are going through it or have loved ones who are going through it so that there's a support system there because sometimes it can feel very lonely. And Absolutely. You know, the stigma behind uh, mental health challenges, no matter how small or how large, uh, can be very ostracizing. So it's great to support such a great thing that helps lift people um, out of, out of their, uh, you know, different, uh, places. So, yeah. um, yeah, I mean, look, look where we are now too. We're all in, uh, you know, isolation, if you will, you know, the, the mental illness is like living constantly in isolation. You know, it's, it's crazy how you, you see a loved one, a family member, a best friend, um, but you can still feel alone, you know, and this is about letting people know that you're not alone. You know, we, we all experience hard things every single day. Life can be very hard, man, you know? And, you know, this, this is the story of just like not being alone. You know, we're all here together, both humankind and all animal kind. You know, we're all one. That's it in a nutshell. Well, I'll, I'll, we'll leave it on that because that's a great <laughs> way to go. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. I, I'll d definitely have you back on because we want to keep you uh, updated. Let's talk again uh, for sure on a Facebook yeah, okay. Live. Uh, when you're getting ready to do your next big adventure. Oh, Let's yeah. Point. September 19th. There you go. And so uh, follow him, Bicycle Brendan, real easy on uh, Facebook, on Instagram, and on his website. Uh, also check out NAMI, great group too as well. And uh, pledge if you can. Uh, if you have the ability um, to, uh, I know a lot of people are financially strapped right now, but if you do have the ability to, to help and support, it's a great cause. Thank you, Brendan, for coming on and thank you me, Jeff. for your friendship as well. Right on, Jeff. Thank you.